Hi, it's Lauren from American Duchess, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, changing the boning pattern on your Simplicity 8162 18th Century Stays. This is a very easy thing to do. I'm just going to demo it here on the video so that you can see how easy it is. All you need is a ruler and some marking pens. You don't have to do this on a separate piece of paper like this. You can do this directly on your interlining layer, which is what I originally did. I just drew the lines right onto my linen inner lining and then I stitched over them. Okay, so I've got my pieces traced out here. Uh, this is facing you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've marked my tabs. In purple, I've marked my seam allowances. Those are no-go zones. You're not gonna do any boning in your seam allowances. I've also marked my uh, lacing channels. So these two here are where my grommets or my eyelets are gonna be sewn. Again, those are no-go zones. All of these spaces in between though are where I can start to have fun with doing different boning patterns. For 1740 stays, I typically do mostly vertical bones or the boning follows the edges here. So on the front piece, of course, we have a diagonal seam. My boning is going to follow that for about half of it and then the straight up and down for the other half. Okay, so I've got this great ruler. This is a quilter's ruler. It's a piece of acrylic and it's very flexible. You can see through it. But what I love about this ruler is that it has all the eighth marks uh, marked on it and I can see through so I can just set this down go to the 3 8 mark and draw the line. I'm using 3 8 because when I stitch this and I stick the quarter inch wide zip tie in, it will take up that space, but you want a ever so slightly extra little space so that it's going to stick in there nicely and it's not going to be too tight. I'm going to start with, oops, start with the front. I'm just going to go through and create a whole bunch of lines at 3 8 When I get to a part that I feel the boning is going to be too small, that's where I stop. And this is just going to be a piece of fabric. I'm not going to put any boning there. Now when I get to the tabs, this is where it gets a little trickier. So in the tab section, I want my boning to run into the tabs. Now that can be vertical or it can be on the slant. So I've got this diagonal seam here, this side seam, and I'm going to run my boning down through the tab. Again, make sure you reference your patterns, your original sources to see how Georgian stay makers did this because no two pair of stays are exactly alike. One important thing about boning is you want to have access to the channels, either from the bottom or from the top, so you can actually get the boning in there. So you don't want a boning channel in the middle here where you're not going to be able to stick the boning in. You can see I've just drawn this line so that it intersects with the slice of the tab. It's very common to see. But I'm not going to do another one past that because this is going to be cut. Okay, now I might do some here. Oops. Going the opposite direction. Maybe one there, one short one. Okay, that's my new boning pattern. You can see there's an awful lot more bones in that than there are in the stays pattern as is. These are fully boned stays. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. You can also email me uh, info at americanduchess.com and for more information visit my blog americanduchess.blogspot.com.